So tonight, if you suck, they come in. <laughs> I always wanted one of them. <laughs> My manager promised years ago, he said, do it right, Bill, and you can have your name in pink. <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> I say, um, it's decidedly average to be here. <laughs> It's kind of live and telly, isn't it? And I've never seen so many famous people in my whole life. It's great. It's like a party at our house. <laughs> I love it. I start very slow. <laughs> I do. I start real slow. And uh, because I think you're the same yourself, you know, when you go, when you go to your work, not you, people at the front, the working classes are back. <laughs> the ones they talk about in those political programmes are the ordinary people. <laughs> All you ordinary people up there. Well, when you go to your work in the morning, like 8 o'clock or whenever you start, you don't sort of go 8 o'clock and into it. You sort of relax <laughs> and scratch your arse. <laughs> and read the paper and look out the window. <laughs> well, this is me at my work. This is, this is me, I'm doing it. I'm not on a yop scheme, this is what I do. <laughs> and it's awful, every time I open my eyes, I'm looking at one of my heroes, it's like a nightmare. <laughs> I did this once before, you know. It was in the year that the Scotland qualified to play in jail. You know, Scotland always qualify, you have to think of the year. I think it was, <laughs> 74 or something, they call it, we were playing in Germany and the guy who was supposed to make money for them kind of uh, ripped them off, the Scottish football team that is. And they ended up uh, by being given a sort of a six month loan of a Vauxhall. <laughs> <laughs> Jet set stuff, isn't it? <laughs> they loaned a Vauxhall for six months. So, the, <laughs> Willie Ormond, who was the manager, asked me to go down and entertain the team and it was hellish. It was just this room full of Dennis Laws and Billy Bremner's. I did the whole thing with my eyes shut. I <laughs> open my eyes. God, it was the best laxative I've ever known. So, <laughs> yeah, so I was going to tell you a bit about myself. You probably know a lot because I've kind of become the darling of the chat shows. But I, <laughs> but I should tell you, I lie a lot. So, some of it wasn't true. I've made myself very windswept and interesting as the years <laughs> have rolled on. Because I was born a sort of fart. <laughs> no. I, I said, I've tried everything to be exotic. You know, and I've fought being plain all my life, but it keeps coming. But I always look, when I buy something expensive, I look as if I stole it, you know. <laughs> but that's what I look about me. You know, people give me presents, you know. Like Cartier glasses, and the police go, where'd you get them? <laughs> they stole them out of a car. So it's... It's weird, you know, I've got this mark on me that says nothing. <laughs> and I don't know where it is. I've, God knows I've tried everything. But it's, I was born in Anderson in Glasgow. And it's a, sort of down at the dockside there. And uh, I don't remember it much because we left when I was about three or four. And I was brought up in Partick in Glasgow, where Partick Thistle originally came from, the football team. Partick Thistle FC. I say that because most Englishmen think they're called Partick Thistle Nil, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and they're always good for a laugh, you know, Partick Thistle. And, uh, yeah, what can I say? I was brought up as a Catholic in Partick, and it was okay. Uh, <laughs> I got A-level guilt, you know. <laughs> yeah. Every time I interfere with myself, I think I'm going to hell, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was an okay education for everybody else. I think I spent most of the time watching pigeons screwing in the reef. The, 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 that was it. That was the education. I, I, but I was very lucky because there was full employment on the Clyde, you know, and uh, that was the way of Glasgow then, the sort of the shipyards, the schools opened their doors and the shipyards opened theirs and everybody poured in. And I became a welder. I was actually becoming an engineer and joined the wrong queue. <laughs> uh, and it's the truth. 
Because you know, there was everybody had jobs going like engineers this way, Mr. Hughes, and I joined the wrong line and became a welder. <laughs> and I started being an apprentice welder without even knowing what a welder was. I didn't know what you press to make it work for Christ's sake. The stuff. Eh, that was it. And I joined the Territorial Army to make myself a bit more exotic. <laughs> uh, I did, I did. It was the Parachute Regiment. And I got my red berry and I, I looked like acne. <laughs> I <laughs> had my uniform and I got my wings and everything and we did an exercise once, it was a complete and utter waste of time as the entire territorial army is we did an exercise, it is, it's a dreadful waste of time and money I swear, I mean we did an exercise in Cyprus all us paratroopers and in the Carina mountains with my gun <laughs> And we chased, the Parachute Regiment chased the Green Howards through the mountains for ten days and we caught one. <laughs> there was thousands of us, armed to the teeth, bayonets down the trousers and it was great, they'll pose it. Everybody looked like Rambo climbing to <laughs> At last I'd become exotic and we caught this poor bastard. <laughs> And he worked in the same shipyard as me. <laughs> he was a territorial too. It was great. I could have sneaked up behind him in the canteen and saved the country a fortune. <laughs> and to give you, for those of you who don't know what I do, that, that, was, that, that must include me really. I've never really understood what I do. But I've, all, I've been intrigued for many, many years, since I was a wee boy, with a, the way ordinary people behave. And I, I've often looked at, at people a, and thought, my God, because I've been kind of obsessed with sex as well, you see. <laughs> through all these, it took me an extraordinary length of time to lose my virginity. <laughs> oh, God almighty, it was, it was ages. I won't even tell you because you'll talk about me. It's... <laughs> It was a long time. I was tattooed first. I mean, it was, it was so long. I had to do it eventually for the sake of my sight. I had to do it. It was purely for, for reasons of, oh, visibility. I, oh, I was going mental. I was becoming a funny shape. I seem to, I seem to see things that, that people don't just take, I was in Los Angeles and this is the truth, there was a sign and it said, to the Braille school. <laughs> I thought, who is it for? And I thought, why don't they do all road signs in Braille? People stop go like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's odd, I must say. But I've always... There's something about a ordinary... I don't understand very much. I'm not saying, love me, love me, I'm thick. Right? <laughs> but there's a lot of things that my brain won't allow me to understand. You know, because they're so incredibly boring. And God knows I've tried. Especially with politics, and you get two pages, you go, oh, bollocks, who cares? <laughs> who cares? <laughs> I mean, that's how I, I've, I've become a kind of anarchist, you know. I think, roughly, the desire to be a politician should bar you 